defiant, aren't you? Because I know something. I know you're afraid of him. Of a teenage boy? Of the man he'll become. I'm aware of a certain potential threat. It's just not true to say that Deucalion was scared of Scott like, like a little kid is scared of the dark. It's more accurate to say that Deucalion thought of Scott the way conservatives think of socialists, okay? The mere idea of a true alpha is so alien to Deucalion's emotional status quo that it threatens his entire way of thinking. There's another exchange that's important to this aspect of the Deucalion-Scott dynamic. He wants a true elf in his back. He thinks it's you. Then what is he waiting for? What does he want me to do? He wants to make a killer out of you. That's what he does. But if I kill someone, I can't be a true alpha, right? You want the psychologist's perspective? He's an obsessive who both desires you and is threatened by you. Moral does a good job of explaining Deucalion's specific brand of crazy. He is desperate to possess the rare thing, but at the same time, he can't bear for the rare thing to exist. The latter part of that psychosis is the key to answering the overall fear question. Why does the idea of Scott as a true alpha fuck with Deucalion so much? My own diagnosis of Deucalion, based on how he formed the Alpha Pack and their subsequent reputation, is one of deep trauma leading to psychosis. The incident with Gerard and the subsequent physical trauma of blinding, paired with the betrayal of his beta trying to take advantage of his perceived weakness, created the Deucalion we met at the start of Season 3. The person that emerged from all that was psychotic in the classic sense that he's no longer in touch with reality. Eh, that's not quite right. Let's say he rejected the reality that he'd known before and made a new life around an entirely false reality that all power comes from violence and destruction. He quite literally became a zealot of his own religion. He convinced Ennis to join him by promising that Deucalion's way was the only way to gain enough power to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the hunters and to seek revenge. Ennis, in turn, brought Kali into the fold. She was apparently blinded by love for Ennis because her actions with Jennifer suggest she wasn't actually on board with Deucalion's whole philosophy. Then Deucalion began looking for unique alphas to add to the pack. He was thinking that this would somehow increase his power in a new way. He found the twins, and the boys had been abused in their pack, so they were totally on board with killing everybody once they had the power. But they, too, showed doubts in the truth of the Church of Deucalion. So now we come to Scott McCall, a bitten werewolf who somehow managed to defeat an insane and powerful alpha, stop a canima, and bring Deucalion's nemesis, Gerard Argent, to his knees. Now, rumors spread quickly. The werewolf community in Northern California is apparently small enough for word to travel, and Deucalion set his sights on possessing Scott. But here's Deucalion's dilemma. A true alpha, which everyone agrees Scott had the potential to become, would be a powerful addition to his pack, but a true alpha would also prove definitively that violence and destruction are not the only way to gain power. In other words, Scott, by his mere existence, proves that everything Deucalion stands for is a lie. For Deucalion's worldview to stand, Scott must not become a true alpha and must only gain power the way Deucalion did by killing. Any other outcome is unacceptable because it will shatter all of his delusions. This overwhelming desire to preserve this altered reality leads Deucalion to make stupid and self-destructive moves, like wasting all the time advantage he had before the lunar eclipse in a futile attempt to get Scott to kill Jennifer. 